Dubai's most iconic fashion moments. One exciting thing about the fashion industry and the spectrum of engaging pop cultural moments are the iconic moments that spaz across the red carpet shows, fashion films, editorials, photo shoots, and what could be seen as mere social media engagements. These moments put together make up the iconic moments in the world of fashion, which go on to become big pop culture moments that inspire the 2020s. From Thames' Electra moments at the Oscars to Dominique Jackson's cute poses, these are the most iconic fashion moments we are currently digging at Spice. My name is Uwa Gideon Anitin Fon, popularly known as Giddy Fire. I'm an actor, a host, a presenter, a content creator, and this is Spice Most. Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Quick. I am a social media content creator, YouTuber, and entrepreneur, and you're watching Spice Most. My name is Akin Famino. I'm a menswear and lifestyle content creator, and I'm also a doctor. This is Spice Most. How has your year been so far? It's a journey I don't even know how to explain in the words, but I'd say I appreciated every moment ever since I left the Big Brother house. I think it's one year down now. And it's actually what the lifestyle that I was looking for, and it's amazing. So I'd say it's been a good one, it's been a good journey. Yeah. Well, my year has been great so far. I mean, it's been a mix of, you know, the normal ups and downs of adulthood. But in terms of career and um, content creation has been amazing. I've been a part of quite a number of projects I'm really excited about. So yeah, it's been a good year. <sighs> my year has been in phases. My year has been in phases. It's had good, it's had bad, it's had God why, it's had everything. It's been a mix. It's been a roller coaster. So I love it. What project are you currently working on? I'm currently working on my brand, Miss Quick. I expect that to launch real soon. And yeah, that's like the most exciting project I've, I'm working on. I've been working on pushing my brand out there. So I also have a business I'm running that's Giddy Guys and it's been amazing. So for now, we're just trying to know what we want to do and how we want to do it and putting our brand out there on the map. So I'll say I've been doing more of content creation and brand collaborations and it's been amazing. So I'm just putting in my best for that. And you know, anything that is good requires proper planning. So I've been doing it one step at a time and it's going to be amazing too. Well, I'm currently working on a content project called Content is King. It's actually a series I'm doing. I've started it a couple of years back and I do a major project every year. So this year, there's gonna be another volume of Quentin is King and then super excited about it. What moment of this year would you consider iconic? Um, okay, so what comes to mind in terms of an iconic moment this year has to be um, Farrah Williams' collection for Louis Vuitton. I thought it was a big win for black pop culture. And then I've always known Farrah Williams as um, a fashion icon. He is the definition of an icon. Just to see him express um, his, his style in a collection was really amazing to see. And all the pieces killed it. Amazing. Uh, a lot of great things have happened in the year, but I would say the one that actually wowed me or the one that made me to really believe in so many things, I believe in miracles, would be when I launched my company. I think it was something that was scary at first, but for us to be able to put the work in and it came out to be a successful project, I mean, it was, it was something to remember, yeah. So I would say that was very amazing. I think that was around February, March, yeah. And it was worth it, yeah. What is your favorite fashion moment of the year? Okay, so for my favorite fashion moment of the year, I'm actually gonna give two, one personal and one general. So for the personal one, it has to be a contribution I had for the business of fashion magazine. Uh, that was a big deal, I was excited about it. And for general, um, it's pretty much recent actually. Nigerian was just nominated as the editor of British Vogue, and she by name. And, and I mean, that, that's a big win for the Nigerian fashion industry. I feel like Nigeria is getting to heights where the world is really seeing how much we contribute to the fashion industry. And then, yeah, that's superb. My favorite fashion moment of the year I mean, is definitely going to be AFBC. Like, ABC for we're looking forward to the awards. We're also looking forward to what people are going to be putting on on the red carpet. I mean, it's been that, like that for a long time. I I think let's say since the incident with Harry Song, like I mean, I've always been particular about people who wear to the AFBC. So I say AFBC is so what's that? Yeah. How did your brand impact the fashion space this year? So even when I look at my like my fashion style and my content that I put out, I'm always very, very particular about well, like the kind of message I'm trying to pass you what I'm wearing because it's a lifestyle and it's something that 
from how you appear, people will be able to read and know the kind of person you are and know what your style is. So I would say I was I was on a modeling show that was Mr. Supernational. I was in Poland, so I represented Nigeria. So from there, I was able to collaborate with very nice designers. And even when we shot our reunion this year or so, I think we did the amazing thing. So I'll shout out to like Kola Kudus, he started me for the reunion. And it was amazing because my three days in the Fubert designs also hooked me up one of those days. The that signatures has been coming through. So my brand has been telling my designers also, it needs to be a statement, it has to be a banger. So even if you go through my Instagram page, you see it. I reached out me once, it was an amazing style. I was supposed to use that in Poland. And I feel like with those styles, it's been passing a message to my fans and people that have been following and all that. Uh, okay, yeah. Give you knows how to body this outfit and it's been amazing. My brand has influenced fashion in this era in the sense that I dress according to how I feel. My look is a visual representation of how I feel and according to the events, the places I'm going to be at. So yeah. What role did fashion play in pop culture this year? So fashion has always been integral to pop culture. Everything about pop culture has always had fashion at the, the cornerstone of the foundation of it. So this year, I feel like fashion did have more of an expression in music and arts generally. And then, yeah, for most of the, if you notice most of the tours that most of the musicians did, Beyonce, for example, had fashion as one of the highlights of it. There was so much expression through fashion. And the foundations of pop culture right now we can say are centered around fashion. Give a word of advice to a fashion enthusiast. A word of advice to a fashion enthusiast is to be true to yourself. Um, try to be an original. Like you can admire someone's style, but don't try to copy that person exactly. Find things that you like in that person's style and infuse it in your own life and come up with your own self originally. That's my advice. To the fashion enthusiast, I would, I would say fashion is very dicey, crazy, and I would say kind of like scary space. But if I'm to give an advice to them, I'll tell them not to be afraid. Push it. If you feel say what you, let me let me come down to our language. If you feel say what you, they do or what they will make sense. Body will. You don't know who's gonna be inspired by that. You don't know who's gonna like that style. You might look at it and everybody will be like, what you doing? What are you wearing? But don't be afraid. It's how you body it that makes it to be amazing, that makes it to be enticing to another person, do you understand? So if I'm, if I'm advising them, I'll tell them that, don't just be scared, like, if you're going all out, go all out. Let's be like, this is what I'm known for, crazy styles and all that, just do it. And I feel like you'll be fine. Once you're doing that, you're bodying it properly. Before you know, you're taking over the whole life. What I'm gonna advise every fashion enthusiast out there is that you stay true to your style and be consistent and one more thing is to always evolve always evolve you don't have to you know stay stuck to the same position all through i mean you can stay through your style and evolve i feel like it's a very important message to always know how to and when to evolve with your style thames at the oscars donned in an architectural one-shoulder white tulle dress with a wraparound statement shoulder detail and a thigh-high slit from Lever Couture, Thames took the go big or go home theme seriously as she sparked fashion controversies that later turned out to be an international pop cultural moment. So we want to be very realistic about Thames at the Oscars. I think to me, like I said, if you want to do something, you do it well, you go all out. I like I liked her outfit. I legit loved it. But you cannot please everyone, especially online right now. In an, in we're in a society now that everyone feels like my opinion must count, even if you are not asked. They're just like, no, I must voice it out. So when people start coming to say, oh, it was rude, or it was offensive of her, that people imagine trying to get to the Oscar, like you'll be looking forward to be at the Oscars all year, and you're not sitting down behind terms. So I'm like, why are you trying to make an issue out of something that there was no much issue like it's not much of a, it's not much of a big deal like that but to me the outfit was amazing and i like that she actually bodied it well 
funny story, many Nigerians or many people that were even trained their opinions, they don't really know much about the Oscars. But when you mention Thames outfit, they are just like Oscars. So it was a big moment for her, big moment for her brand. Shout out to her also, yeah. Magnificent. I love the outfit, the whole vavavo. It was doing what it was meant to do, 10 over 10. So Thames at the Oscars was a moment for Nigerian fashion, generally speaking. So I'm going to start with that. And for the outfit, I thought it was amazing. I loved it at first sight. It reminded me of what um, Nana wore for one of the AMVCAs, you know, that structured, elegant dress. It was really good. However, it was a bit controversial because, I mean, we all heard about how it blocked people's view at the Oscars. And man, maybe Estelle should pay a little bit of attention to that next time, but she was the moment. Yeah, I loved that look. It was, it was by far one of my favorite looks of me. Kylie Jenner's lion head dress. If there's one thing the Sheparelli show gave us this year, it's the iconic look from the reality TV star and all-round influencer Kylie Jenner, which featured a 3D customization of a lion head at the show earlier this year. The customization was made out of folks fur, foam, and racing and got 100% approval from PETA. Now that's iconic, right? I don't know if I can wait. That's the truth. That's the truth. So I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I or if my friend, if I see my friend the way that kind of be like, come, oh my god, where did you go? Do you get? But it was really amazing to see so pull off something like that. But when they now start interpreting it for hunting wildlife and all that, that ah, it's scary, one thing. I don't know how they did the sit arrangement that when she sat, it was not affecting anybody. But it was a nice outfit. I think I like the inspiration behind it. But I don't know if I can wear that. Beyonce's tall looks. She's not the queen mother for nothing, serving looks voice and all that scrumptious glam was definitely the mood board of Beyonce's renaissance show this year. Ah, see her designer, her stylist, we have to give it to them. They are actually putting in the work. It's been back to back hit, hit, hit. So yeah, I'm loving it. Beyonce tall looks, I mean, Beyonce is a fashion icon. She never gets it wrong, has never gotten it wrong as, as, as far as I know. And then this tour particularly, I was speaking about pop culture earlier and I said that she made some serious statements. If you notice the performances and the designers she worked, she worked with a lot of local designers. My favorite look from her was from a designer I've never heard of before, where she wore, um, the, she wore this black dress and uh, a patterned fedora it was such a good look and i've never heard of the designer before i did my research and saw that it was a local designer so yeah every look was a hit and that was my favorite one featuring looks from her personalized collection with balmain and eccentric put together pieces from ivy park's collaboration with adidas there is no other way to say slay without yonce one thing i know with hers she doesn't want to restrict herself she must go all out. So I feel like the tour looks have actually been very comfortable, energetic, and it helps her to deliver her performance very well. And even with her dancers, her backup dancers on the stage performance is excellent. So if that's what she's comfortable in and she's delivering, I mean, we're enjoying ourselves. We had a good show. She had a good performance. It's a good one. So I feel it's here. For what she was trying to portray, it's very good outfit. like very, very nice. Hi, Barbie. Following the release of the 2023 cinematic movie Barbie, directed by Greta Gerwig and starring Margaret Robbie and Ryan Gosley, there have been a wave of nostalgic references to the color pink and rhythmic patterns to clothing that exude high voltage of femininity. This movement was also engineered by Margaret Robbie's stunning looks on the red carpets of the different premieres which made references to the previous Barbie dolls created since 1969. Hi Barbie! Hi Ken! Um, I would say it was such a... Um, how, what's the word I'm looking for? It was such a buzz, right? I enjoyed the whole pink phase, the whole pink era. It was beautiful, so yeah. Yeah, so Barbie actually probably had one of the biggest campaigns I've seen in a long time and um, I really loved how it was you know expressed the entire Barbie campaign so I'm going to bring this one home <laughs> so I mean we had our Nigerian Barbie premiere as well and then there were so many beautiful looks on the red carpet I mean people interpreted Barbie in their different ways there were lots of African Barbies there was a lot of pink and all of so it was very interesting I mean there were some rather weird fashion choices as well but i mean at the end of the day 
I strongly believe fashion is expression, and that expression was very clear for all to see. Doja Cat's All Red Ensemble. Aside from beautiful songs, a new personality, and a raunchy attitude, one thing Doja Cat gave us this year was her iconic look to Chaparelli show, which dazzled in over 30,000 red ruby crystals from Swarovski. Some may call it fashion statement, but we call it a work of art. Doja Cat is an interesting person to say the least, and at the end of the day, I feel like fashion is an expression of self. She being an interesting person, you would always expect interest in fashion choices. So for that particular look, I think I'd pay a little bit more attention to the makeup as opposed to the fashion. Because what was the center of the outfit was actually the makeup, where you had um, all the Swarovski crystals that it was a mind-blowing look and it was very Doja Cat. It's not my cup of tea, but it was very Doja Cat. The return of Y2K fashion. From high brows to thick lip coverage, the old Nolly girls sure know how to do it best. Not only did the fashion moment of Y2K bring the heat and storm, it also brought the drama to our screens, picking a variety of sizzling content from the TikTok trend. This one is this one is a classic. So I've been seeing the trend, the makeup on TikTok, on Instagram, everything. It's been beautiful, so I love it. So yeah. The return of Y2K fashion. So funny story, when I was a child, my mother kept telling me that there's nothing we are doing now that has not been there before. So she's always saying like, oh, fella Troza coming back. Oh, now people are wearing fella. When fella was wearing it at that time, everybody was like, what's the idea behind this? But if you notice, the palazzo that we are doing, palazzo, jiggy and all that, is inspired from there. So I feel like when they drop proverbs, if you look deeper into it, you would understand that, okay, these people are not just talking. There's nothing new under the sun. So everything that is there now, it has been there at some point. It's just a rebranded and upgraded home. I don't want to use the word better, but more sophisticated version of it. So Y2K fashion, it's, it's, it's around, it's up and around, I mean, some of our dresses and all of us were inspired by that because, I mean, it's, 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 it's time to be like year 2000 where crazy stars started coming out. People were accepting it, people were budding it, people were like, okay, yeah, this is new generation, let's go all out. And what was really raining now, you know, everything had the time and season. The time was pencil trousers, the time was carrots. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not seeing people wear carrots again, like, like three quarters and all that. There was also a time that it was a flare, like, past, let me not, sorry, oh God, not past or shall, but you understand, your trousers will get space, you get. So yeah, but now it's, it's white to key and it's been there, it's coming back. It's just coming back properly. A good blend of nice colors, nice jackets, nice palazzo pants. And I feel it's been going all out because even with our musicians these days are topping the chart headline and all that whiskey, David Bonner, Ashake, check out their style. It's, it's that, that's it, that's the idea behind it. Even with Magneto, Olamide, all of them. So I feel it's, it's amazing and it's something that is not so, it doesn't, should I say, it doesn't classify or it doesn't say, oh, it works for this kind of people. It doesn't work for this kind of people. It's something that anyone, everyone can wear and you look good. I mean, people wear it for a lot of things these days. People even wear it to work. You get, and as far as you're comfortable with it, your body in the world is a nice inspiration. You're passing a good message. I feel it's, uh, it's amazing, like I said. Hi guys, my name is Akin Famenu. I'm a menswear and lifestyle content creator and I'm also a doctor. It's been amazing on Spice Most. Stay safe and goodbye. Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Quick. I am a social media content creator, YouTuber and entrepreneur. It's been amazing on Spice Most. Stay safe and goodbye. It's sad, I know, but it's been fun on today's episode of Spice Most. Too cool to let us go? Stay woke on our 247 website, www.myspice.tv and kick it off via our social media platforms, Spice TV underscore Africa on Instagram and Spice TV Africa on Facebook. Until next time, stay fetch.